Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on this gloomy winter day. Today I wanted to share a little bit with you about one of my favorite topics to read about and think about, and that is convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is the independent evolution of similar or analogous traits by species that are not closely related. These similar traits evolve as a result of different species occupying similar environments or similar ecological niches. A popular example is the evolution of wings in birds, bats, insects, and pterosaurs. They all followed different evolutionary trajectories, but still ended up with wings that let them take to the sky, though their wings are constructed very differently. For example, a bird wing is essentially feathers extending along an arm, while bat wing is skin stretched across bones of the fingers and arm. Another cool example of convergent evolution that may have distracted me recently, maybe for a little bit too long while I should have been doing other things, which is the case of the Tasmanian wolf, which is extinct, and the canids, like foxes. Though Tasmanian wolves were marsupials and canids are mammals, the Tasmanian wolf evolved to fill a similar ecological niche, which led to a strong jaw, sharp teeth, and a similar body form. In botany, a wonderful example of convergent evolution is carnivorous plants, which have evolved independently at least seven times. These plants grow in nutrient-poor soil, and as a result, they have developed ways to get their nitrogen and phosphorus in more creative ways by absorbing nutrients from their prey. The three pitcher plants, Saracinia, Nepenthes, and Cephalotus, each evolved independently on their respective continent. In the past, many organisms were taxonomically organized by their morphology. Classification is important because it helps ease communication about species and science and conservation. Previously, many mushrooms were organized into groups based on their form, inky caps, corals, puffballs, etc. However, with molecular DNA analysis, we found that just because species look similar doesn't mean they are closely related. This has made mycological taxonomy a little bit of a mess that scientists are still working on reorganizing. Now, this doesn't necessarily matter to someone who doesn't work in science and is just going out to find edible fungi to eat. Species A is still edible, even though it's not as closely related to species B, but I think it can make a huge difference to understand the evolutionary history of the species that you interact with and how that fits into the big ecological picture. I hope you enjoyed learning about convergent evolution today and that maybe I lured some more people into my fan club. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more about evolutionary history and taxonomy, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. I'll see you guys next time.